uh, I had, uh, you know, uh, about more than 7,000 people applying to this university to get places in the 50, 50 places we have for this degree program, right? Actually, for all the 11 degree programs, when I started five years ago, uh, there were 5,000 applicants. This year, we had 17,000 applicants. You see, so it's, it doesn't mean to say that, you know, that we can increase the numbers to these degree programs. You have to supply the market uh, as needed. But there is plenty of opportunity for us to start new degree programs that will be catering to the needs in the market, you see. So that's the whole idea. So uh, the animal science degree program, computer science and technology, there are uh, industrial information technology. These are computer-related uh, programs. Then mineral resources and technology, that is teaching students how to add value to the mineral resources in our country. Then entrepreneurship and management itself, and the science and technology degree program. So maybe if I have the opportunity, some of these degree programs will be uh, conducted uh, outside the main intake through franchising, outside the university, but uh, that will come in only in time. So, now in this value proposition, how do we deliver this value through new academic processes? I'm not going to really go into this uh, aspect of the processes because it's a bit too advanced for you. You know, you need a process that can really deliver the value. So, we have created uh, innovatively uh, three new processes, the academic process, the research and development process and the administration process. That will So in these three processes, we have some significant characteristics that differentiate Wawelas University from the other university. The, primarily, in the academic process, we are a course-driven university, whereas in other universities you will find they are department-driven and faculty-driven. We are a course-driven because courses are interdisciplinary, right? So the course directors really drive because they understand the market needs and the whole course committee is made up of uh, several different disciplines who come together to provide uh, the students with that knowledge. And then the, uh, in the research process also it is something similar, but we choose huge national goals, nationally important objectives uh, for value addition through research work that we are doing. Uh, and there are different, uh, for example, one of the goals that I have in the university for our scientists, our academics is that, you know, bring down the national energy bill by about 40% by the year 2020. How do you do that? You need to strategize and then do research in the, uh, the solar energies and the alternative energy sources that are available in the country and, you know, biofuels and things. So, a lot of new things are happening in the university with that objective, you see. And then the administration process. We don't have clerks, we don't have PMs, we don't have computer operators in our university. It's all a multifunctional uh, 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 job that uh, operations assistant, person called an operations assistant has. So they do really everything in the university and one person perhaps may be working a half a kilometer to about three, four kilometers every day to do a job, you see. You see, jobs are on foot most of the time because they need to get things done rather than sitting in a desk and then, you know, writing letters and things don't happen at the end of the day. It's not like that. We make things happen. So, <clears throat> and these processes really create the value that we are looking at. So, that is how we really take the students to the market. Now, all behind all these things is the learning and growing of this organization. We are a new organization. We are not a hundred year old organization. So we have a process of learning, learning, learning to grow. So the experience gained within the organization is retained and learned. So every organization has to do and this is also important to any organization in the country to develop their human capital. So we, I spend a lot of time training people and developing them. Our own academic staff and our own uh, administrative staff and even the outsourced uh, uh, services. All our services, non-core activities are all outsourced. So, the information capital, that is the, you know, the IT related uh, activity and then, you know, knowledge base, university resource uh, planning 
and then the management information systems, all these things. They have to be web-based. By the way, you can visit our website and see what it is like, you know, over Velasco University. If you Google it, you can find it. Then, the organization capital. Now, this is an aspect that most people tend to ignore, the organization capital. It is, it is mostly intangible because it is consisting of leadership, teamwork, the family feeling in the university with the staff, the students, the academics, then the learning and research that is in the university, then the, the customer orientation, the work ethics and culture. I have a person in the university to manage culture and that's a very important thing, the organization culture. So whenever there is a culture, it doesn't mean that you know your culture or my culture, but it's an organization culture. So the organization has a culture that is evolving very nicely that fits into the model of operation that we have. So uh, then the orientation of our employees towards the customers and then the motivation. So these are the elements of our organization capital which keeps building and developing, getting stronger every day, right? That the intangible assets cannot be removed easy. So every person, every lecturer in our university works on a three-pillar service model, which is, as I said, you know, the academics have to work uh, in delivering the academic lectures and also student mentoring, keeping the students on the right course. And then research on value addition, on economic uh, value addition, and then the social responsibility activities. Every lecturer has to have at least one project in the university to cater to the social needs. And these are the three pillars of service. Every lecturer gets evaluated for performance uh, on, based on their self-evaluation of these activities. Uh, so, the, finally, the fiduciary responsibility that I have towards the government as a, as a funding party, you know, because uh, funds come to me from the government, so I owe a responsibility to the government to provide value by finding, uh, you know, at the end of the day, jobs for our students and uh, things like that, right? So basically, how do we do that? There is productivity, there is growth in the organization, productivity by using resources well, by reducing, keeping our costs at a very low level, and also maximizing our asset utilization. So, and then, you know, through the revenue expansion, through our extension programs, we have a lot of extension programs which are generating funds, and also uh, the, the giving undergrads the real value for their uh, time there. Now, that's the overall strategy, which I'm saying that, you know, this model can be used uh, by any organization or any university for really driving the organization to its vision. The vision that we have in our university is to be the center of excellence of value addition for the Sri Lankan resources. And we are well on the way for that, right? Okay, so, um, so finally, let me tell you that by following this, that we will have the employer, teacher, student triangle which is a paradox in our country, getting harmonized and synchronized nicely. And the employer will be finding suitable employees and they will collaborate on research with our universities, assist in curriculum development in the universities. Now, most universities don't think the private sector has a role to develop their curriculum, but I'm saying that they uh, have a role and then also engaging trainees and then participate in university governance as, you know, uh, CSR, as uh, we need good top people from the private sector to uh, sit in our boards. Then also teachers providing value to both students and employees and using market signals for curriculum development and then develop futuristic curricula because students who are entering today will be passing out in four years' time, so it should be ready to the market. They're taking accountability for students through mentoring and persistent interaction. And the students totally focused on education and developing skills, preserving on innovation and research for value addition, seeking private sector employment aggressively. Now they're doing it the other way. They're seeking aggressively 
government employment, uh, developing customer focus on market orientation, right? So, that's my last slide. Remember, if you set your mind with a burning desire to succeed and energize yourself, drive to respond to problems and uncertainties that confront you, and then develop your capacity to capitalize on opportunities that arise in such situations in an ethical manner. You get what you want. Thank you very much. What Dibamala tells me is that, you know, my time is over, so... <laughs> but if you have any questions, quickly ask me, I will explain to you. Sir, yeah. now you are uh, studying the Tana University, you know, focused on the economic development and job orientation like that. Yeah. So I didn't see in your degree program any business development or economic development. In those uh, areas, there is no... Uh, program degrees in your university. That uh, is one, thing, one question. Yeah. And other thing you said that the, uh, when the government is, you know, funding, so how do you able to, you know, do your university uh, than the other normal uh, government university? Will they not, you know, uh, insist you to follow uh, some uh, their policies? Yeah. Good question. Both are very good questions. Let me explain to you. Now, uh, let me take one example of an undergraduate program that I have, T Technology and Value Addition. Now, T Technology and Value Addition, what is T in our country? It brings us 1 billion US dollars as income in our country, right? Now, if I tell you to increase this income to 3 billion, right? That is economic development. Now, how would you do that? Can you go and increase the area that we cultivate tea? No. Can we suddenly increase the world market tea prices? Can't. So then how do we do that? We have to really add value to the tea that we produce. How do we add value to the tea? By drinking the same tea? No. So we really need to know the science behind, technology behind value value. How we do that is transform tea from the beverage that it is today, which is a cheap stuff, right, to a high value other products. It has cancer relieving properties, it has uh, other medicinal properties that will be uh, good health, you know, for your heart conditions and things like that, right? uh, reducing cholesterol in the body, right, so it has a lot of health benefits. Extract the active ingredients of this and then, you know, if you can produce one product line that comes out as a result that can give a billion dollar industry support. You understand? So, you know, then you think of rubber. Now, today rubber is a very primary product. You know, our nation is a, a, a producer of primary raw material and seller of primary raw material. We need to find the technology to produce high value, high uh, value added products and technology is needed. So, a university should be able to give their knowledge to the future employees, those are our students. So, rather, I mean, basically, nanotechnology transformed rubber uh, to, to, to very high value. Today, there is one company in our country who has found nanotechnology very useful to maintain their market leadership in the world market for solid tires. And that was done very recently over a period of eight months. When the company started losing its market leadership in the world markets, they quickly went into this research and they found it uh, very useful. Like that, you mean have red sector There's so, so many other areas uh, that you can use nanotechnology. So, like that, you know, it, all of the degree programs are really market oriented and demand driven at the very highest end of science and technology. And also we have a separate uh, program for entrepreneurship and management. It's not just management. Uh, today, management students can't be managers sometimes because they are just bookworms. But here we make them really entrepreneurial and become people who can really run a company, who can really run a job as manager. So, and then uh, uh, there is a second question about other universities wanting 
you know, the, I said that, you know, the traditional problem in our universities is the silo-based nature of their education system. The departmentalization and the faculty-rising. Right? So the departments have to have all the resources within the department to uh, run a degree program. Now, in my university, we don't have that problem. We are interdisciplinary. Right? Now, other universities can't transform themselves. They want to. 